The AFN commander saw what you said, and he's making changes. As a result of the survey, AFN Europe is debuting a new AFN The Eagle Top 20 Countdown show and adding more stateside and host nation news to the radio mix. What else is changing, and what is staying? Stay tuned during this edition of Open Line, the live radio call-in show where you call in and ask the experts your questions. Have questions about the AFN survey results or AFN programming in general? Well, just call DSN 389-4595 or commercial 0621-4608-5595 out of 49 if you're calling from outside Germany, or email us at openline, one word, at afn.dma.mil. Live with us in the studio this morning, the 33rd AFN Europe Commander, Colonel Scott Malcolm. Good morning, Colonel. Good morning, George. How are you? Very well, thank you. And Gary Bautel, our AFN Europe Chief of Network Radio. Hey, George. Hi, Gary. Hey, um, this seems unusual, isn't it? The three of us uh, AFN people talking about AFN. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite subject. I love it. I think we're subject matter experts, eh? Yep. <laughs> hope so. <laughs> we'll find out over the next hour. Well, Colonel Malcolm... First up, the response rate for the online surveys can be very low. The, the goal for the AFN Europe survey was 1,500 surveys, but the network got in close to 5,000. How did the network get so many responses to its survey? What do you think was the secret there? Well, I think there were a couple of reasons. The first is uh, we marketed it pretty hard on uh, radio and television, and, of course, uh, we had a prize for, you know, one lucky winner, and uh, we were thankful to the Edelweiss for contributing that for us. So I think those were contributing factors. But I think the main reason is that uh, our audience is, is part and parcel of what we do. They care about AFN. They they understand that it's a huge part of the quality of life experience here in Europe, and they want to have a voice. And so they uh, and we're thankful that they took the time to respond. But, yeah, 5,000 was quite a bit. We're happy with that for sure. The AFRTS Broadcast Center in California gets the rights to the TV shows you see on AFN, and they figure out the best time to schedule them. That's why the AFN survey focused on what your producers, Colonel Malcolm, create in Europe. What do your AFN Europe journalists produce exactly? Well, we do uh, we do um, live radio on the PowerNet in the morning, morning news watch, and again in connections in the afternoon. And then at each station where we have a local AFN station, we do a morning show and an afternoon show on AFN The Eagle. And then um, we do a, a network show that goes all over Europe, you know, on the Eagle in the midday called the uh, Your Daily Dose of Weeks that's done out of Vicenza, Italy. When you watch AFN TV, how can you tell what is produced by AFRTS and the production house they have over there, what's done by AFN Europe headquarters in Mannheim, Germany, and what's done by a local station? How can the average viewer figure that out? Well, there's... Uh, uh, as you just mentioned, there are three tiers of of the products that you see, and um, the ones that are you, you, the one, some of them are done by a, a contractor back in the states, and they take a long time to produce, and they typically have a long shelf life, and they're meant for the global DoD audience, and they are you know the big issues that are strategic DoD themes, and an example of one of those commercials is bike safety with the chameleon. Um, and you, and that is a uh, you know film quality commercial. You can tell that there's an, and then the second tier are those that we produce here in Mannheim or down in Vicenza, um, and those are those are issues that deal with regional European regional issues, and we produce those here. And then uh, and they have about a medium sh- length shelf life. And then there is a third tier um, spots that are produced at the local station level by our junior folks, you know, sailors, uh, airmen and soldiers and civilians that are there, and they have a shorter shelf life and they deal with issues that are particular to that local community. I also see sometimes with some of those uh, commercials on TV or infomercials or spots that I'll see an AFN logo up there, like I'll see AFN Atlantic Prime, but uh, others I won't. Um, are they up, is the logo up there for the AFRTS level spots, but not up for ours? Gary, would you care to answer that one? I, I think it, it depends on the local station's uh, capabilities. You know, and there's some some differences between the spots that are produced at the various stations and between the commercial uh, organizations that uh, AFRTS hires to to make spots for us. Uh, and some are older, some are newer. So you're going to see a lot of difference in the way they're produced, and also in the quality. I mean. If you produce a spot uh, at a station where you only have two or three people, you know, doing television and radio, uh, it's going to be a little bit faster and a little easier and uh, not quite so complicated and involved. You know, it's also should be noted that uh, 
you also have these tiers as far as the news is concerned. I mean, uh, obviously, when you're watching NBC or CBS or whatever, you know, it's not coming from us. But uh, they, uh, the newscasts are also produced at the Pentagon Channel, and the, the Navy has theirs, and the Air Force has theirs, and these are global newscasts that they send out, and then we do ours. So there are there are three levels to just about everything that we do on radio and television. That's a good point. In preparation for the show, we asked each of our local stations to check with their audience and ask their audience what questions they had for you, Colonel Malcolm, uh, about AFN radio and TV programming. Can I say something before you go while we're still on the subject of spot announcements? Um, One of the things about the survey that we noticed, the the primary trend of the survey respondents was uh, about our spot announcements on radio, on radio, but primarily on TV. And we hear you. Um, the, you're, you're telling us that you want to see more in different spots. You're telling us that you want us to see you want to see spots that are less focused on don't do this and don't do that, sort of the negative application. And you'd rather you'd rather see spots that that uh, that highlight uh, the positive application. You know, do this behavior as opposed to don't do that other behavior. And we're working on that. Um, we have. Uh, we're developing um, <clears throat> new programs to kind of get at that. One of the things that that we're doing is we've we've got two new folks, uh, two new producers to produce uh, command information. We're going out and we're trying to find uh, uh, opportunities to partner with other agencies to make commercials, like the um, uh, the Ad Council, for example. We're airing some of those commercials. If you've seen the one with the father at the this, you know, the squirt gun playing with his son, or the father and the cheerleader daughter, things like that. We're we're just looking at different opportunities to increase and broaden the uh, the type of spots that we have on there. So that's one thing. We're also coordinating better between my headquarters here in Mannheim and our southern region headquarters in, in Vicenza so that we want to make sure we don't duplicate any effort. So, you know, occasionally we might be doing the same a spot on the same subject, but we want to make sure we don't do that. So then we get, instead of two spots on the same subject now, we're going to get, we're going to really watch that from a management perspective. Then we get two different spots. Um and then we've got a we've got a standardized uh, community calendar uh, initiative coming up, so that we can get the short-lived information up there, and and it'll take our producers really limited time to put those together, uh, and you'll start seeing that over the course of the uh, the next few weeks to a month. And then we want to get a better handle on um, measuring effectiveness of spots, so that ones that do work or we hear hear a lot about, we'll be able to find out what makes those work and what's good about that. And we will we will kind of repeat the uh, repeat the goodness in those and the ones that we don't hear much about. We won't try those strategies. Just a point on spot frequency, uh, Colonel Malcolm. Uh, as you know, uh, because of the three tiers. Very often, uh, you'll get subjects repeated within a very short time, or right. sometimes we're in the same spot break because uh, our home station back in California will be providing one spot on the subject, and we may butt right up against it with another one. There's no way to know what they're going to send us at, you know, the second before it's sent. So that will happen occasionally, and usually it uh, it's w- one, during one of these months when we're concentrating on a theme, and there's a lot of you know, a lot of information going out right now. Probably a lot of spots are being generated about swine flu, and that's probably going to have uh, a certain amount of uh, uh, repetition on the air. Nina from Rotterdam has a question about the TV commercials that she sees on AFN. Um, I was wondering, as far as TV and ra- um, the TV commercials and the radio commercials, um. When I watch and listen, watch TV and listen to the radio, I notice that it's always the same commercials that are being played. Are there any commercials from the states that you guys can rotate through? Thank you very much. I really appreciate. Yeah, well, and that that uh, question there, it, it's uh, dovetailing off what you're talking yeah. about right now. But what she's asking there is the way I'm interpreting it is why don't we have the Talking Frog, the Budweiser spots? the same commercials that she sees in the United States on AFN TV. Why? I uh there's a, there's a long answer and a short answer. The short answer is is one that I would answer as an army officer and that is because I'm not authorized to do it. Bottom line. My the regulation that drives what we do says that we can't air stateside commercials. So that's really the beginning and the end of it. Now the logic behind that though is the longer answer and I could I could talk for 20 minutes on it, but let me just cut to the chase, and that is that those are though we are not we are we don't endorse products, 
we're a Department of Defense agency, we don't endorse products. That's one thing. Second thing is those are made to produce revenue for the stations that run them, and we don't produce revenue. That's not what we do. And then you can go and we can start talking about, you know, the licensing, the music that's used. You have to get special permission for, and we're not in the business of that. And it just goes on and on and on. So I like to just drill down to the Army officer response, which is I am not authorized to do it. But to point what the audience would, uh, what the effect that it would have on our audience would be that they would basically lose all the prime time programming that we have because right, that's a good point. Thank because you. we wouldn't be able to afford it because we, uh, you know, if we we would be violating all kinds of r- rules and r- regulations in the first place. But uh, if we had to buy, you know, if you had to pay for the, if we took in revenue from the commercials, we would basically lose. We'd, we'd have, have to, to pay for the content that we're showing. Exactly. And right now, out of the goodness of the the goodness of the hearts of the the networks that either donate the programming to us or give it to us at very low cost. I mean, that's how we that's how we provide content for our viewers. And you know, we're talking about nine channels, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. That's a lot of content, and yeah. it's all the mo- it's the highest rated stuff in the states. And I remember being here when I was a first grader, uh, and my dad was in the army. And, you know, AFN, I was here when it first started in, I want to say, 71 or something, yeah. and it came on at it came on at 10 in the morning and lasted for about six hours, and they played the Star Spangled Banner, and it was gone. And so Black we've, and white. we've come a long way from that. And one of the, But one of the reasons, the, uh, you know, one of the reasons we're able to get all this content is because we don't show stateside commercials. And finally, um, another, another uh, reason is that my mission is to provide command information. And that command information comes in the form of those spots in the middle, and it comes, you know, in the, in the information that we put out on the radio between our DJ shows and what have you. And so uh, in order for me to be able to do my mission, that's that's another reason. I have a note from our producer that Terry from Monheim is on the line with a commercial question. Good yeah. morning, Terry. Hello, good morning. Am I on the air? You are. Okay, good. This is Terry, and Gary knows me well. Yes, I do. I'm the big, com- <laughs> I'm the big See, complainer. Well, you keep us straight. Okay, I try. I try. I have a couple of complaints, as usual. Okay. I, I am constantly on the radio, all the shows. I'm uh, disabled and have to lie around a lot. Okay, my question. When an event has already taken place, like last week, and it's all over and done with, why are we still getting ads for that event? Well, that's a good question. I heard that same ad this morning, and I haven't had a chance to talk to the people in the command information section. Okay. But it involves our, our computer system that we load all these commercials into, and it's... Uh, but somebody needs to wake up, and when the event is over, they need to take them out. That's well, in very fact, annoying. <laughs> we, did, we did exactly that, Terry. Okay, good. That I'm same, glad. That same spot has come up before, and uh, we went into the computer, we deleted it. Good. So Things it's not supposed to be there. It's, but it, somehow <laughs> okay. a computer, it just pops right back up again. Okay, next question, yeah. not to take too long. Okay. Uh, with all of the commercials, uh, we get so many repeats umpteen times a day, and they get so annoying. I know them all by heart. Yeah. That was one of the, the big issues in the survey. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that But I don't get to take the survey, as you know. Well, you, you, your, your own personal survey, you've been keeping us, like I say, up to date on what we're I doing wrong. I hope so. <laughs> so. I'm probably uh, uh, well talked about we as appreciate being the most annoying one, uh, but whatever. Yeah, we okay, need to do one, better. Okay, Repetition. Okay, one that's the main thing. Yeah, repetition is a problem. One, yeah. And, and and we're working on it. We've got uh, we're, we're looking right now at uh, we're scrubbing the whole list of commercials that we have. Some have been on the air too long. Great. So we're going to try to clean that up. Great. One more thing, please. Uh, many times, particularly at 1800 when Rush Limbaugh comes on, 1805, uh, sometimes he doesn't show up. I mean, his voice is not there. And we're getting all kinds of junk from some other NPR program or some mm-hmm. radio program. And it's 20 minutes into the hour, and finally Rush comes on in, so, in the middle of some sentence. Okay, I'm going to point the finger in a different direction now. Okay. Uh, our mother station back in California that provides us all of the U.S. programming, Yeah. Uh, they just installed a whole new system. Good. And it is <laughs> totally 
messing us up here, you know, because the past couple of days in the morning, if you listen in the morning, oh yeah, we had some we had some real problems with features not being where they should be, and right? Two, double audio over the newscast. That's what that was going to be my next thing. Is yeah. Double audio. It's, it's all difficult <laughs> to listen to two different yeah. sta- things at one time. Yeah, it, they are having a heck of a time installing that new computer system there okay, in Riverside, Cal- and we are we're talking to them twice, three times a day. Yeah. Good. <laughs> uh, about that, and uh, unfortunately, uh, we're just gonna, we're going to just have to continue to work through that. Yeah. yeah. Well, many times when I've called the trouble line to complain, uh, any time of day or in the evening, uh, particularly in the evening when Gary's probably gone, <laughs> if he ever goes from yeah, there, once in a while. Uh, but whenever I speak to them and tell them what the problem is that's going on, like right that moment, they say, "Well, that's up to the programmer, Gary." Uh, <laughs> so everybody dumps it right back on a, Gary. I know that. Yeah. Well. Get okay. their name next time. Thank you very much. <laughs> you bet, hey, Terry. Terry? Bye-bye. Terry, thank you very much for your call. You're welcome. Bye. And, and one point that Terry was saying she was annoying and called too much, that's absolutely not correct. Uh, listeners like Terry keep us straight, yeah. and they let us know when we have problems. And the challenge is when you have so many radio and TV services, it's impossible to know all the problems that happen unless conscientious people like Terry give us a call and say, hey, look, this needs to be better. Yeah, uh, two points on that. Um, the first is that, you know, there we this is a very technologically centric business that we're in. We've got computers running and automated systems. And and, if you, you know, it's just the nature of the business that sometimes those things get off they get a little skewed and for example everything is synchronized to a particular clock here and if if for some reason that clock gets off by just even a second you know then all of a sudden the domino effect of problems can start having and are can start occurring and so that's one thing i'm not making excuses i'm just saying that in, in the it's the nature of the business you got to be you got to be really really uh, on it and we you know we've got people here 24 hours a day seven days a week uh to try to manage that but the the second thing is that um uh, for Terry and pe- other people, you know, we, we've got a feedback link on our website now. If you go to the left, left side of the afneurope.net, um, that says feedback, you can click on that. Uh, there's a little thing you have to read. Take you about, uh, five seconds to read it. And then you can send us a question. And we're getting about 20 to 25 questions a day. And we answer every one of those personally. Uh, our, our, we have a guy that does that, and he, he he'll uh, if it has to do with programming or content, you know, where shows are aired on television, for example, we pass that on to the broadcast center in California. Or if it has to do with other things that we can fix, you know, we we, we deal with it. But uh, for what it's worth, I, I get copied on every one of those messages, and so I've got situational awareness of what the audience is thinking all the time. But anyways, feedback link. Uh, the only re- uh, the only thing I would add is that if you do use it, uh, be polite. You know, we're, we want to we want to do a good job and. Uh, it's not it's not productive to call us idiots or anything. Just tell us what the problem is, and we'll get back with you and fix it. We have another caller in line, but before we go to him, I would like to remind you, you have a question for us? This is the place. Uh, the AFN Europe commander is in the studio ready to answer your question live. Call him at DSN 389-4595. Again, DSN 389-4595. Commercial 0621-4608-5595. At a 49 if you're calling from outside Germany, or email one word openline at afn.dma.mil. And with Colonel Malcolm, the chief of AFN Europe Network Radio, Gary Bautel, between the two of them, they've got the answers to your questions. James from K Town is on the line. He has a question about radio news bias. Hello, James. Hi. And uh, I understand from our producer that you have a question about radio news and a perceived bias? Uh, yes, I do. It. it I'm kind of a news junkie, and it seems like the uh, prime time in Europe is basically controlled by conservative uh, news programs. And I was just wondering if there was a way to say you could uh, um, change the time slots on a six-month basis of, say, a Rush Limbaugh and an Ed Schultz. Maybe we can get Ed Schultz on at 6 o'clock for a six-month period and, and change it back. Well, so the reason we have uh, Rush on at the time that he's on is because he's live. And he often re- he talks about things that are going on right then and there. He, he re- reacts to things that are happening at that time. Um, it it would be possible, of course, to record him, play him later, and and move uh, Schultz into the other slot. But uh, it it just doesn't. Uh, if we did that, though, Schultz would be from the night before. That's right, Schultz. Is- so because we'd have to record we'd have to record Schultz 
on a Monday night, for example, offline it, and then play it back on Tuesday at 6. So you wouldn't have the benefit. You, you also wouldn't disadvantage have the, benefit of, the, the, the left to the right because right. The, the left yeah. would be old news. Yeah, that's the reason for that. Uh, it, we've, we've always had a lot of uh, people unhappy with the way the commentary is presented because, one, uh, you're, you're trying to, to, to be as actual as, as possible. There's always going to be some difference in the blocks of time. Uh, there, there are other people who are perceived to be doing commentary. A lot of people tell us that, you know, NPR is commentary or HEVS commentary. So uh, it's it's a real juggling act, and it's very difficult for us to, to try to keep everybody happy on all sides of the political spectrum. But it's very, very important that we have this because, you know, we're here to give the American public over here a – microcosm of what is going on in American broadcasting but of course we can't bring it all but we have to bring the highlights and the and 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 the and the leaders in their field so uh, uh that that's basically uh, what we're confronted with and you you do have a, a a lot of varied programs which is a good thing it just seems that the prime time I was a uh, Kind of, kind of dominated on the conservative side. Yeah, and it's Five because of what's out. live is the big thing there, James. They they put on the air what's live and current rather than pre-recorded and it's old or yesterday. Okay, well, thank you for taking my question. Thank you very much for your call. No problem. Bye. The survey asked a lot of questions about music preference, and we have a Terrence from Brussels who has a question about mm-hmm. music, in particular a question about country music. Yeah, I'm a real big country music fan, and I'm wondering why AFN doesn't play more of the uh, country music uh, within their Eagle format. Okay, good question. Well, the Eagle format uh, is a very, very complicated and scientifically uh, designed music program, uh, which uh, is based on a, on a survey of our audience, and it's mostly adult contemporary and uh, some older stuff from 10 or 20 years ago. Uh there are some country music selections in the Eagle format. They're called crossover. They sort of fit in both uh, adult contemporary and country. Uh, we do, however, have uh, the Country Countdown show on the Eagle, uh, which we are going to be putting in a new time slot uh, because the survey indicated that country is very popular. And uh, so we're going to take uh, the American Country Countdown on Sunday and move it to 1,700 hours. Sunday evening instead of 11 o'clock, and we hope that that will uh, reach a wider audience. Uh, we're also thinking about increasing the amount of country that we're playing on the power net. Uh, would 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 you have any other questions on that? Well, uh, before we before we go back to Terrence, yeah. I, if we do, I just wanted to also say that um, I am more and more it's surprising me, but I'm more and more becoming a fan of country music, and I I uh, when I'm at home and I want to listen to it, I just go to my decoder channel 22 which is uh, 24-7 country music, and I, I listen to it in my house. And it's, uh, you know, it's nationally syndicated from the United States. Uh, it's quality uh, top 40, 50 uh, country music, and it's well-hosted. And, uh, and then we insert uh, local command information from here in Mannheim. So Channel 22 on your decoder is another great way to get country music. We're going to go back to the phone lines. Brian from Vilsack on the line with a question about embedded ads. Hello, Brian. You still with us, Brian? Uh, no, this is not Brian. Oh, it's not Brian. Who's this? Yeah, this is Brian. Oh, wow. <laughs> have we got two guys online or something? Do we have two? Do I have stereo callers? Uh, Brian, are you there? Yes, I am. Is anybody else there? It's just Brian. Okay. Hey. Interesting. <laughs> See what I was talking about, the gremlins in the building. Uh, Brian, what's your question? Well, I've got a couple. <clears throat> One is uh, the advertisements that are embedded into, and I especially noticed it on uh, Sports Overnight America, where the announcers will just give out uh, advertisement for Sears sighting or whatever they're talking about, <clears throat> along with phone numbers or insurance and with the phone numbers. <clears throat> and I realize that's all coming from the states, but it sounds like what your question is. Uh, we said we don't do commercials, but you heard a Sears commercial. Why? Yeah, well, I want heard Sears commercial, Sears commercials for insurance, and yeah, it's part of their 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 taglines and their tr- <clears throat> transition lines. They they'll usually throw in a product name and maybe a one of the branding statements, right? Uh, and they and they do it on the quick and dirty because they know that uh, uh, they're 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 getting extra buck for their for their ads, and these are impossible for our our uh, our, our broadcast engineers to edit out. You know, normally the spots are 
are at the same time every day. And so at the uh, control center, at the broadcast center in California, they will cover those areas with our own our own command information spots. But when they do these little transitions and toss in such and such insurance with, uh, you know, whatever, that's that's something we just cannot control, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And it's mostly because it, it's live. It's live most of the time, mm-hmm. yeah, sure. With those live shows, it's impossible to edit them out when they're just throwing announcements like yeah. that. Yeah, and you know, if you listen to NPR, uh, NPR, you'll hear them saying who's sponsoring them, too. But, I mean, they right. don't do commercials, but they have people who, who donate money, and so they mention their names. Hey, right. Brian, real quick, let me ask you, what do you think about Sports Overnight America? quickly uh not being a real sports guy i, I don't think much about it okay because i you said you listen to it and i i am a big sports guy I, i'm i'm just on the fence about what uh well they they seem they seem to um you know, well that's all right if yeah. uh, if you're not a big sports guy yeah. that's that's fine you said you had another question yeah and uh on the weather <clears throat> weather reports um is it possible to get a little bit more detail when they talk about bavaria Bavaria is a pretty big area, and, uh, you know, it's the size of, of some states in America. Sure, Brian. That depends on where you, which uh, forecast you're listening to. I, I listen to only to the radio. Yeah, right. Eagle or PowerNet? Uh, AM PowerNet. Or, PowerNet, okay. Uh, if you were listening to the Eagle Morning Show, they would be giving you much d- more detailed information because that's a show that is only heard in Bavaria, uh, and that's their function. Uh we have in, in the PowerNet uh, the responsibility for informing people from Norway to uh, Spain, Greece. yeah, Saudi Greece. Arabia. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, so you really can only uh, basically highlight what the, the the very basic weather condition is in in in, in the region. So uh, we can't get much into detail; otherwise, the weather forecast would be about ten minutes long. Right. Yeah, but. Brian, when are you tuning into the radio? What times? All throughout the day or morning, yeah. afternoon, or when? Uh, mainly morning and afternoon. Okay. I'd call up AFN Bavaria and talk to Sergeant Jerry Malik. You can go to afneurope.net and get the address there. Mm-hmm. But uh, usually our local DJs push weather, especially in the early morning from 6 to 9. That's the time when we find weather is, uh, is the most important. But th- that's fine. Whenever you want weather, if you're not hearing it when you ask for it, Call up AFN Bavaria, talk to Sergeant First Class Jerry Malik, and request more. Okay. And on the weather, is it possible for them to, since most people, the majority of people over here, here at least for three years, and they travel throughout Europe and stuff, and in Europe they always put out the Celsius in, you know, stateside we use Fahrenheit. Is it possible to have them say both Celsius and Fahrenheit so people kind of will, over time, get educated hmm. yeah uh that's been tried and it just confuses people uh you know because if you don't know the difference or if you don't understand what which was which is which you know you don't know whether it's it's zero or 35 degrees on any particular day uh the people that we discussed that with uh, the last time this issue came up decided it's much better to stick with what people know uh radio is is uh is a fleeting thing you know and the information goes by fast and you have to be as as uh to the point as focused as possible so that was our decision in the past i suppose it could be reviewed again mm-hmm. but thanks for your suggestion we'd like to make way for another okay. call that's on right. the way but thank thanks, you very man. much for calling all right thanks. on the line anthony from heidelberg with a question on decoders uh, yes thank you for sticking with us anthony your question please uh, yes. Um, well, first I wanted to, to just uh, compliment uh, AFN on that. It's like great uh, programming, and there's a wide variety of programs. And but the problem is, it's not always at the right time, at least for for me. And would be ideal is if I if uh, there was a decoder that had the ability to record. Like uh, there's some decoders that have hard drives, and you can record, and uh, it's very painless. Uh, that's um, yeah, that's a uh, that it, that technology is available uh, in some places in, in America, and uh, as we over the course of the next four to five years, we don't uh, we don't know exactly when we're going to do this, but at some point um, we are going to transition to HD television here for AFN. It's going to be about four or five years out, 
but when we do, that will also bring in a new generation of um, uh, of decoder for us. And we have asked, and uh, AFRTS, our parent company, is working to try to get that capability built into the decoders. Uh, we also might we we might do a thing where <clears throat> this those decoders are actually what inserts the local command information in between spots. So, yeah, the next generation of decoders should have that, and it should have some other capabilities as well. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, it does. And, uh, yeah, I just wish it was a little sooner, but I guess I'll just be patient. Yeah. Just, uh, do you keep up the good work. Hua, yeah, appreciate the compliment. Okay. Have a good day. Next up, Vincent from Heidelberg, and Vincent has a question about Ed Schultz. Hi, Vincent. Hello. So do you like Ed Schultz? Yes, I think he is a, a very excellent uh, commentator. I think Rush Limbaugh is also excellent. Uh, I just must disagree with something that was said before. Uh, I've called on several occasions at 1800, and I was, of course, connected live to the Ed Schultz show. Uh, and then, of course, the information was aired at 2100. So this is what, uh, yeah, I'm wondering what, uh, why are you saying that it would be taped a day later? Well, because we wouldn't be able to, if we switched them around, we wouldn't be able to air it uh, at the, uh, you know, at the at the time that. Russia's airing. When I say we, when I say we're getting it live, what I'm saying is we're able to pull it down from the satellite service that we subscribe to, yeah. and they and and that satellite service carries both of those programs and cannot carry both of them at the same time. So we we tap into it at 1800 to get Rush. We tap into it again later, so it's live for us. I hear what you're saying, but still, if we were to switch it, do you understand what I mean? That we'd have to offline it, you know, for 22 hours or 21 hours and play it again the next day. Hmm. Yeah, when we're saying live, it's uh, when we get it from AFRTS in California, we put it on the air immediately. We don't record it and play it back later. Okay, well, how does this work with the uh, with the Ed Schultz show? That that means that what we're hearing on Ed Schultz show, for example, t- uh, this evening, we that is what 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 will be said tonight is something that was aired yesterday. No, that's no. if we that's if we tried to air it at six and put Rush on at nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that means that means for the next, I would say, I'm exaggerating now. Okay, the next 25 or 80 years, we will only hear Rush Limbaugh at 1800. <laughs> no, it does it doesn't mean that at all. I mean, uh, they're 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 always reviewing how they bring the programmings in, and as technology becomes available and and other channels become available, uh, new opportunities arise to uh, to adjust. Uh, we know that a lot of people want to hear Ed Schultz earlier in the day, and uh, that's something that we're we're trying to figure out how to do, uh, and keep it current. Uh, but we, we're certainly aware of that need. It's interesting. You've called the Ed Schultz show yes, in the states, and he's used your question in his show. Yes, yes, yes he has. Oh. Yes, he has. So on, on several occasions, yes, he has. And uh, that's why I say. Uh, but I must call at eighteen hundred. Right. And uh, and when I call him at eighteen hundred, I am also live on the radio in America as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, at 1800... Uh... Our time, our time. Right. Exactly. Well, at the same time when you air Rush Limbaugh, this is the same time when I call the Ed Schultz show. I'm also put on, um, sometimes they put me on hold, but I can hear his, his first program live, mm-hmm. and then I can just ask my question. Well, maybe his program isn't live at that time. I mean, I, it's really, there's a lot of possibilities right. there, but uh, it's interesting. We'll have to take a look at that. Yeah, you brought uh, up something we weren't aware of. We'll have to look into that one. Do you have any yeah. other questions? Well, no, but let me just say this, and then I'll just I'll get off here. But it, it is live because the current information that that they're debating is basically what had happened, well, what you see in here on CNN, whatever else, other programs. Uh, that means it is it is really live. Um, right, but again, uh, as I said, we the satellite service that carries that that we tap into live currently is carrying Rush right. first, and then later. Yeah. Um, because it can't, it doesn't carry both of them at the same time. But you know what we can do, and and and, can and I will tell you what we'll. I'm going to go back and and ask the broadcast center about that, and uh, and just just see what some possibilities are. Because you're not the first one to mention it, and we are in the business of being fair. We're completely apolitical, and clearly more people are driving from 1800 to 1900 than they are at 20 at 2100 when he comes on. Yeah, I mean it's, it's certainly worth looking into. Okay, then, good. Then the last point I would just like to say is uh, thank all the militaries, uh, families, and men and women in uniform for doing what they're doing. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Next, John from Grafenvir, and John 
has been in Europe for a while, and he has an observation he'd like to pass on to the AFN Europe commander, Colonel Scott Malcolm. Hi, John. <laughs> yes, sir. Good morning from Gravenbeer. I just have one question. First of all, I'm totally satisfied with, a, with AFN over here. I've been here 20 years. The question I have for you, sir, is I know it's probably an oversight, and the commercials I get concerned about, I know you've been beat up by commercials this morning, but there's a few examples of like a soldier who got a DUI between 6 to 10 years ago. And remember a few years ago when it, two or three commanders ago had where the soldiers came on TV and said I had a DUI, and they keep and they, they keep replaying that. And I guess my question that's got that commercial has been on a good six to ten years. I don't know that I've ever seen that one. It's on. It's down here in Grafenbeer, sir. Hmm. Okay. What uh, What I'd like you to do is call up Sergeant First Class Jerry Malik at AFN Bavaria. Okay. And uh, give him some specifics of exactly what you're seeing when you see it. Okay. And if it's been on the air that long, it shouldn't yeah, be on the air anymore. Yeah, it's floating around in their local database, I think, and Here's it just keeps one. popping up. There's a one of an E7 who retired a few years ago, and they have like on their advertising like the local paper, you know, and they're like, and they're showing a picture of him in uniform. I guess this is another example. He's been retired a few years. Probably ago. is he wearing BDUs too? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I guess he is. my question, <laughs> sir, is if they can look at it, you know, and just look at the ones you got some commercials with soldiers in BDUs still showing some of the old commercials. Okay, well, those are two good examples great. of spots we need to clear out. And you got and uh, but I think what you're describing in both of those are things that are only shown in that local community. Yeah. So we got to be down there to see them. But we'll we'll talk to to the guys at AFN Bavaria and okay. see if they can vector in on those two in the particular. One really have me Maybe I haven't seen them. I don't watch a whole lot of AFN because I just don't watch a lot of TV. But when I do watch it, about once a month, I see that one with a soldier who had a DUI. Okay. A good. It's at least five years. He's in BU. That, that's the one that really has me concerned. Okay. That's Thank a good you. point. I appreciate the vigilance on that. Thank you. Thanks for your call. If you'd like to call and talk to the AFN Europe commander, 33rd AFN Europe commander, Colonel Scott Malcolm, call DSN 389-4595, commercial 0621-4608-5595, at 49 if you're calling from outside Germany, or email openline, one word, at afn.dma.mil. And you may also talk to Gary Bautel, the chief of AFN Europe Network Radio, the on first. the show also. Are you the first? <laughs> I'm the first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you've been here a lot longer than me. <laughs> when did you get to AFN, Gary? When, when's the 62. first? 62. 62? Yeah. Wow. He's, he's like so uh, do the numbers. V- vintage port. <laughs> <laughs> Aged well. <laughs> yeah. We have... Um, with the AFN survey, it came out earlier this year. We talked earlier that there were quite a few folks that signed up and for the survey and let uh, AFN Europe know what uh, they think of AFN radio and TV programming. And we talked about some of the changes that are being made to AFN Europe radio and TV. Um, in general, the survey asked a lot of questions about music preference. What did the survey reveal about the audience music preference in general? Well, uh, it, it indicated that there's a, there's a huge acceptance for our Eagle format. And uh, we we put a lot of time and effort setting the Eagle up, and we did a lot of research, and we wanted to make sure that, that uh, uh, when we finally got this thing on the air that it, it was going to fly and people were going to be happy with it. And we were right. Uh, we, we noted that uh, not only do the people enjoy the music that they're hearing on the Eagle and um, – we we also discovered that some of the things that we didn't know that that uh, there was a, this large acceptance for for country music. There were you know almost fifty percent of the people asked wanted more country, and a similar number was you know not very happy with country. So uh, we have to satisfy that group without offending the other group. And uh, we're as I said before, we're going to. Uh, Put the country countdown show on the Eagle at a at a more I think a better time later in the evening five o'clock. Uh, we also realized that uh, uh, our our format on on the PowerNet is has got listeners, but uh, we're now in the process of rethinking uh, the categories of music that we currently use, and if we can increase the number of music programs that we originate, for example. Uh, we have a lot of country on the power net, but it's in the middle of the night when most people can't mm-hmm. hear it. So there's a possibility that we can increase country in, in the connection show that we have on uh, every day uh, network-wide uh, from 2 to 6. 
Uh, or we could probably find another time slot for uh, another country show, possibly even a classic country show. Uh, we're thinking about all kinds of things, uh, perhaps Aladdin show, who knows. Uh, this is down the road a piece, but uh, the survey is, is one of these uh, instruments that we use to find out where our audience is going, what they want, and uh, this, is, this has been extremely helpful in helping us plan for the future and make those adjustments that we're making right away. One of them is that we're going to take little Stevens Underground Garage from the Eagle, which is now uh, airing at 4 o'clock on Saturday, because we found that uh, uh, that kind of music wasn't really uh, falling in line with the typical listener of the, of the Eagle format uh, and, and would probably fit better with the PowerNet's um, more classic rock kind of uh, format. So we're moving... A uh, little eagle to the a uh, little Steven. little Stephen to the little eagle, little Stephen to the power net uh, uh, at eight o'clock on Saturdays. And that'll be happening in the next couple of weeks. I'd like to go back to the phone lines. Larry in Heidelberg has a technical question. Hello, this is Larry from Heidelberg. My question is about the radio signal that I pick up in my car. It doesn't come in very well, and I'm wondering if you can tell me why. That was. I, how many people had questions about AFN and the ability to pick it up in cars? Was that a Yeah, it was a big thing? issue in the survey, uh, not just in cars, but uh, uh, there, there, there are certain, a lot of our, our listener areas uh, are just not getting uh, the kind of uh, radio service that, uh, uh, for, for various reasons, I think probably Colonel Malcolm can address that. Yeah, I tell you, if there was one thing that I would fix today, if I could, right now, I would do, you know, it would be radio reception, but... The fact of the matter is, is that the frequencies that we operate on are given to us by the host nation, whether it's Germany or Belgium or Italy or what have you. They're given to us, donated, free of charge. And uh, they were, and in most cases, they were given to us years and years ago before the commercial value of radio frequencies got to be what it is today. It's you know now it's a lucrative business, so we're lucky to have them. That's one thing. About eight years ago. Uh, the United States for the American automobiles went to a digital standard of odd number frequencies on FM, and so if when you brought so from that point on when you brought your American car over here, and uh, you you want to tune into a frequency that we got years and years and years ago, which happens to be on an even number frequency, you can't get it, or you can get it just by being up next to it. The str the signal strength has to be really strong for you to pick it up. Well, the signal strengths are also uh, regulated by the host countries, and in some cases we we can only we can only blast out at uh, you know or not blast out we can only eke out at 50 watts. But uh, um, another another thing that we that I hear a lot is hey how come I'm I'm from K Town or I'm from Heidelberg and I can pick up 98.7 out of Hessen. A 90, uh, AF and Hess and the Eagle on 98.7. Well, that's because that is a jewel of a frequency, and we're authorized to operate at 60,000 watts on it. So uh, it just really covers up everything. So we are looking at, um, and these uh, frequency negotiations take a long time. We've had some success recently. Uh, we've got... Um, uh, we've got two new frequencies, one in Schweinfurt, you know, odd number frequencies, and um, we've had some success in getting that, but those negotiations take a long time, about, you know, seven to ten years. you got to go through the State Department, inter uh, you know, uh, between the American government and the German government. Long story short, uh, we're lucky to have the ones we do. We're working to fix the ones that we we don't. We're going to maybe t take up that, we're going to maybe s give back that 98.7 at 60,000 watts and use it as a negotiating uh, element to to get better frequencies in other areas. So it's something that we're aware of. We're working hard. We have about ten minutes left on the show. I'm going to go back to the phone lines. Mimi from K Town, and Mimi doesn't like sports. Am I right, Mimi? Yeah. Can I probably turn down your radio a little bit? Okay. That that'll drive you nuts if you got that on. Okay. So the FN Europe commander's here. Uh, he's all ears. Right. Um, hi. I would really appreciate it if we. Um, I just sort of um, amended my uh, wish. If we could have uh, Joe Ed Schultz to replace Rush Limbaugh, and I really miss, miss the Tom Joyner morning show that used to come on. Unfortunately, it was really late. That was black music and black commentary, which I don't hear at all. Um, and I really do not like the guy that has replaced 
Paul Harvey, although Paul Harvey was conservative, at least he was more neutral. Do you know the guy he replaced him? I can't think of his name at the moment. Huckabee. Mike Huckabee. Yeah, terrible. He's so anti our president. I think it's I think it's very bad for the troops to hear that constantly. And uh, um, I think it would be good to have more uh, fresh air NPR programs at night Mm -hmm. possible. And that's all I have to say. Well, I appreciate those remarks. Uh, We have heard from others uh, reacting to Huckabee. Uh, It's very difficult to follow somebody like uh, Paul Harvey. And Huckabee is not Harvey, that's for sure. But... uh, He's so he is so biased. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make it one thing clear. You know, we we here in Europe uh, receive all of these features from the broadcast center in California. They do all the contracting, they line up all the shows, and they they schedule them for the times and so forth. When we get these comments, such as yours, we forward them to them for future decision making and possible changes. You know, if there are lots of such critiques then, you know, they, they may uh, consider replacing him with someone else. It's what about all- the Tom Joyner morning show? I can talk to that one. Sure. We we did a survey a couple of years ago, um, and we pulled the Tom Joyner uh, program off as a result of that survey. There was, not only was there z- little, very, very little interest in it, there was a lot of anti-Tom Joyner on it. So we pulled it off, and it's available on our decoder channel called The Touch that some people watch. We we put it on there, a question on the survey this time about, do you listen to The Touch? Are you interested in programming? Like, and one of them was Tom Joyner. And we got very, very, very little response, if any, but, of anybody. But you're the first person that I've heard in two years that wants to have it back on. Well, he had more intelligence to him. I'm, he had a lot of uh, music, which was nice, but his political commentary was, I thought, ten times more intelligent than Huckabee. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I can tell you that the political commentary over the last two years has changed radically. <laughs> yes. So, Yeah, unfortunately. Depends on which side of the fence you're sitting on, and it sounds like the guy who likes sports and country music, who's in charge, uh, has a bias, too. <laughs> and my question is, who's redressing that? No, it's not. It's not our. It's not our call to begin with. So, uh, what we do is, as I said, we try to get a, a a lot of different programs out there, a lot of different for a lot of different interests. You know, when we started, as as the, as the colonel was mentioning earlier, and we had like one service, uh, we you know we, we were constantly under fire from people wanting more sports, more country, more rock, whatever. And now we've got all these services, and we're still not making everybody happy. I guess that's the name of the game. Yeah. I'm going to have to jump in, ma'am, uh, very quickly. Of two more folks that have questions, and I want to get to them before the uh, news at the top of the hour. But thank you for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye. We, we have on the line Bob from Bees Baden, who's been waiting, and he has a question. And I, Bob, my producer, tells me you want more sports. Is that right? Well, the only thing I'd like to have is uh, I'm a retiree, which is like 0.0% of the American population over here listen to the radio a lot, okay? And like, uh, I don't watch TV, don't have AFN TV, but I, I would like to have go back to the football games at two o'clock in the morning on on Monday mornings. Uh, so you'd like live uh, radio sports would be what like you'd like to hear, correct? Yeah, a yeah. lot of people. A lot of people. Live is, I wouldn't say a lot. Well, not not necessarily. A lot of baseball. people have commented on that yeah. to us. A lot of people have made that point, and uh, it's, the problem is that, uh, again, the broadcast center that, that has to man these shifts and provide anchors to do the sportscasts and cover up the commercials, uh, they, for budgetary reasons and also because based on surveys that indicate that that there's a very uh, small percentage of people who now get their sports on radio, right. decided to drop that service. Okay. And uh, we have been, again, telling them that, that there is an interest over here for it, and, and if they could possibly restore it, we'd be happy to run them. So that's where it stands now. And one more. Uh, one hour of jazz and one hour of classical music. We're talking about, <laughs> yeah, in the, in, in the. Uh, that's, that's way out there too, y- I know. Yeah, uh, I mean, we may get, Actually, no. we may get some jazz on, on the power net, uh, because I say we're going to, we're going to be taking a look at everything in the power net. We may open up a jazz show, classical music. I can get that from the local. Yeah. No, the local. That, okay. We'll okay. try it. But thanks, right. thanks for your Thank call. You. Thanks. We have time for one more caller, and that last caller is Frankie from Monheim. And, Frankie, you're the commander. What do you want? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, this is Frankie from Mannheim. Uh, my question. 
Uh, my question is reference to the number of public announcements you make. Uh, for instance, on FN, when you have good movies on there, can you keep the public announcement to a minimum, maybe like once per hour? Or when you have a musical program on AFN radio, keep uh, the announcements to one per hour or maybe one every half hour. Is that possible? Uh, not really, Frankie, because, uh, uh, y you know, when you're watching TV, you're probably sitting there, you're going to see the same thing a couple times or three times. Uh, and, but people come and go, and they and, and they come in, and they, they're looking for certain information, they go out again. Uh, this this is really true with radio, and if, in order to get the message across, you really have to bring it like weather. We uh, in our in our morning newscast, we bring the weather every 15 minutes, or the headlines every 15 minutes, because people tune in, they tune out, and and if they had to sit for an hour to get the information they wanted, then uh, we wouldn't be doing them a service. And Frankie, the whole reason AFN is here is for those announcements. Really, the entertainment is just a motivation to get you to uh, listen to the announcements. Oh, really? I had no idea. That was the strategy. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the whole reason for AFN being here is those announcements. Command information is what we uh, call it. Yeah, and, and of course the mission is entertainment too, but that comes, I think, in the third position in our mission statement. <laughs> but, okay, well, that's understood. And I, I know, unlike the civilian side of the house, the, the sponsors are uh, uh, paying the uh, broadcaster to make their uh, products uh, available over an advertisement. But I thought military, since we don't use advertisement. Oh, no, uh, those messages are real important. Oh, but, I understand the uh, I thought uh, it could be kept to a minimum, but okay. I understand what you're saying now. But very much appreciate you calling and letting us know, and you're our last caller, Frankie. Congratulations. Okay. Yeah, okay. Unfortunately, you don't win anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have one emailed question I'd like to get to very quickly before we wrap up, and that is from Jeffrey Lenkis, and his question is, how about separating hard news and the endless reports chronicling the departure of a music teacher or the graduation of a class kind from of Afghan dovetails, War College? It kind of dovetails with what we just uh, talked about. Uh, our audience is very unique. I mean, it's a mixture of civilians, military, older people, younger people, kids, and so forth. And we have to try to find uh, a way to get all their their interest areas in one package. So when we do our newscast, we talk about what's going on in the world, yes. We also talk about what's going on in the military. Now, it may not be interesting for everybody because they're maybe not interested in a Navy story down in Sigonella, but there is an audience for it and a need for it. That's why we do special reports on the weather. That's why we do a lot of information on currencies because it's important information. That's why we mix it together. Nobody else does it that way. The he, other, sorry. Well, I was going to just say uh, the other part of his question was he, he had said that uh, – here this here's the same news story over and over yeah. i mean and and if you just look if if you listen to the news in america you know at top of the hour ap network news will come on and just today you know they're talking about swine flu they're talking about arlen specter it's because people listen to radio at different times and if you want the story to be heard and our guys are producing stories we want them to be heard you want the audience wants to hear them so we do air them uh, to maximize the opportunity that they're going to get heard and typically our audience listens longer than a stateside audience mm -hmm. they're tuned in longer so they're going to hear more repetition colonel malcolm you're leaving af and you're at basket commander what's next for you and what are your parting thoughts well thanks i'm uh i'm off to uh, school for a year um but i just wanted to uh take this opportunity while i'm live on the air and and just let the folks in the audience know a couple things about uh, team af in europe and the first is that uh it's been my joy to be their commanding officer for the last three years but what i've come to learn is that the people here they just really, really care about what they're doing. They're very, very good. And when I say people, I'm talking about military and civilian. Gary said he got here in 1962. Clearly, he cares about uh, his his purpose here, and, and he does it very, very well. George, George, you and others have been with us for a long time. And I just want the audience to know that the people of AF in Europe are professional, and they really care about you. I think the fact that we got 5,000 surveys says that our audience uh, cares about us, and they care about having a voice in it, and um, and so we're all in this together. And we, the folks here at AF in Europe, we consider it a privilege uh, to serve the audience and to do what we do for you. Um, the uh, we we made a point earlier about how how far AF in Europe has come uh, in its ability to to deliver uh, quality radio and television, um, and. One of the things that we heard here today, you got one person calling in saying, once more sports, one person, one less sports, whatever. We appeal to a broad demographic. Uh, there's no way we're going to please everybody, but I think we're getting it about right. I want you to use the feedback link. If you've got something that's really burning on your mind, you want to talk to us, uh, we will get back with you. We want to listen. We want to do well. Final comment, 
uh, uh, to all the civilians here at, at AFN Europe. It's been my pleasure to serve alongside you, and particularly you two guys today. Thank you both uh, from sincerely for your service. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to an open line on AFN Europe survey results with AFN Europe's Commander Colonel Scott Malcolm and Network Radio Chief Gary Bautel. To hear the entire show, go to afneurope.net later this afternoon and hear it all. I'm George Smith.